Well, hello. Today we are going to start day four of Valentangle. And I have to begin um, with just saying how excited I am about this tile. I have a feeling it's going to be super fun. But at the same time, it's not for the faint of heart. You can see up here, I've got all kinds of supplies laid out. I have my Pigma Microns. A glitter pen, a Posca pen, an eraser, four different colored pencils. Of course, you don't need four. You can just choose the ones you're interested in. Three different um, like chalk pastels um, in color, and then white chalk pastel and my graphite all along with tortillon. And so I'm using sort of this like army of supplies for today. Um, you can obviously feel free to just explore what you have at home, but just to know that today's tile is not going to be your typical meditative, repetitive Zentangle tile. If you're looking for something like that, feel free to check out my five Renaissance um, tile tutorial. That one might be a little bit more relaxing. Um, so if you're looking for like an exciting exploration, today is the day for you. If you're looking for a meditative drawing practice, maybe come back uh, to this one on another day. So let's go ahead and get started. So today's tile is a three and a half inch tan tile, which feels so different for, because the past few days we've been working on hexagonal tiles. And this feels like a vast swath of space relative to those hexagonal tiles. So it's going to be fun um, working on a bit of a different paper today. So to get started with our Zentangle practice, I do still want to start with some gratitude. I am so grateful that I have the time and energy and means to you know, explore all of these fun art supplies to be able to practice this art with folks like you all. Thank you so much for being such a supportive art community. I really appreciate it. And so the next step is to take our pencil and go ahead and add a little dot very lightly in each corner. And then I'm going to connect those dots just ever so lightly to create the border for our tile. Taking time to just slow down and relax into what's going to be an exciting adventure. All right, so the adventure is going to begin starting now. Our string is a puzzle string, which is what makes this so exciting, but that also means it's a little bit more complicated than usual. And I have to remind myself over and over as I'm drawing this string to draw it lightly. It is a string. We don't want to see it in the very end. I can get really aggressive with my um, pencil when I'm doing complicated strings, but I really need to just remind myself a light touch is best here. So I'm going to start off pretty easy. I'm going to find the middle-ish area of this top string or top border and draw a string very lightly straight down, as straight as my hand will allow today. <laughs> And, and same on the opposite sides that I create four quadrants. And right in the center here, I'm going to pencil in a small square, square-ish shape. <laughs> and then in each corner, do the same, you know, as if you were in your elementary geometry class and your teacher had told you to mark in your right angles. Okay. Now I'm going to focus for the next moment just on this quadrant right here. And I want us to remember 
the concept of take off and land. So we're going to consider this edge of the tri of the sorry of the square as where we're going to take off from and draw an an arc or a curve and then land right on this side of the square. Again, I have to remind myself to do this as lightly as I can. And then I'm going to do the same on this opposite side of the square. So taking off from this side, drawing my curve, and landing on this side here. So essentially, creating like a seed shape or a pod shape. If you've done some tiles with me, you probably know I'm fairly comfortable with seed shapes and pod shapes. If I can interpret a tangle in terms of seeds and pods, it often helps me to understand it a little bit more. In the original um, sort of step out for this, you would draw this whole arc right here. Um, but it helps me to just focus on one quadrant at a time. I know everybody sort of has their different ways of looking at things. And for some reason, for me, seeds and pods and arcs and focusing on just specific sections at a time um, is helpful. So if you ever find a, a tangle that feels quite complicated, I guess the moral of the story is find a way to break it down such that you can understand it a little bit better. All right, next two steps, we're going to draw two curves right here. And I want to consider sort of the space right here and the space right here. And I want, I want there to be, so I'm sort of auraing that seed shape and I want to end right here at that square. So we're going to, again, make some curves, but they're going to be smaller. That's right here. Just a little V curve right there. Oh, you might hear my cat, Gavin. He's having an exciting morning. He's coming in the room. <laughs> we'll see if we hear him. You may also hear the trains. Union Station is nice and busy this morning. Okay, so that is essentially the original puzzle string. Um, but of course, I want to add my own interpretation. One, as I said, was that I made the squares smaller and that caused these pods to be a bit larger. So what I want to do is play with this space inside the pods. So very lightly, I want to draw in a little seed shape in the center of each pod. And we're going to do a bit of drawing over and erasing. So Buckle your seatbelts. Again, doing takeoff and land, I want to connect these seed shapes with a curve as if there's like a little smile here. And I want to do that for all four of my seed shapes.
So I'm going to take my eraser and we're going to do some erasing such, this, such that this is more of like a Celtic pattern. And I want to think about this like ribbon right here. And I'm going to say that I would like this ribbon to go over this ribbon right here. So I'm going to erase the string lines And I think also, yeah, anything right there. So now you can see this ribbon goes over that ribbon. And then I'll turn the tile and do the same exact thing right here. So there we go. There's a bit more of a sort of Celtic pattern happening inside there. And so for the next step, I need to take some Pigma Micron and do all of these outlines over again. <laughs> and I'm going to do something that I don't typically do. And I would like to start with my Micron 10, which is has a massive tip. <laughs> creates these really thick, bold lines. And I'm going to use that to draw over, essentially, all of these string lines here. I prefer the Micron 10 at this point because I am going to do quite a bit of inking in. This is going to be a high drama tile. And also I find when I'm doing Celtic patterns like this, um, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. There isn't so much of like, oh no, I slightly drew over my line right there. Let me redefine it. Um, the line is nice and thick, so you have a little bit more play, I think. Um, so Micron 10. And as normal, or as you've seen, is my pattern. I'm going to focus on one quadrant at a time. So going from left to right... I'm just going to ink in and just let it be super bold. Ink in each of these string lines. I'm also going to ink in this seed shape right here. So that's my lines all inked in and next I'm going to do some inking in even further. So I'm going to start just right in the center. I am, this is going to be a high drama tile. So lots of just really dark space. All of these outer edges right here, we're going to ink them in and also sort of these side triangles. So I'll show you um, one quadrant. I'll start with a side triangle, curvy triangle. <laughs>
So next I'm going to take out my Micrano 1. So back to our handy dandy good old standby. And I would like to start with something relatively familiar if you have been following me on my Valentangle tiles. And what I notice is this shape right here and right here is very similar to the shape that we tangled in our day three tile. And so I want to put in the same exact pattern that we used on that day three tile here. I want to start to see that there are some themes running through this tile, uh, tile set um, that when we look at all of them put together at the end, they feel like they all belong and they can hint toward each other. So the pattern there was to add an aura line. Then to nestle in a heart right here. And then to draw a decorative aura, which for me just was an aura with some dots. And then when I come and draw this aura here, I want it to come out from the heart and aura this little triangle. And that might require a little bit of a wiggle depend on, depending on how well centered everything is. But that's essentially the pattern that we had added on our day three tile. So I'm going to, going to go ahead and do the same in these other spaces on the side. All right, a pretty logical next step is to, in these little pockets in the corner, it seems like a natural place to nestle in a heart. And I'll draw my heart and then just make sure that it's sort of seamlessly attached to the edge here. Okay, I hope that so far it's going pretty well for you, even though it's a fairly complicated pattern, I feel like it, it can be broken down into, you know, relatively easy, maybe even meditative um, steps on the in-between. I don't know if the next one is going to be such a step, but we'll find out. So right above, we're going to start to finally work on sort of this Celtic, Celtic pattern. And I always like to have an aura around my Celtic pattern. Um, and I want it to connect to a few hearts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my aura and then we'll nestle in some hearts. I do like to say, um, when you're drawing in your auras, give yourself some grace. You're going to find that there are some wiggles and wobbles. 
it's likely you're going to find that there are certain sections that are thicker than others. Don't worry about it. That's part of the beauty of hand drawing. Um, you know, give yourself some grace when you're um, working on putting in some auras. So next, I'm going to nestle in some hearts. Um, and you have a few choices here. You could just nestle in like a big heart in each one of these corner bits. I think I would like to do two hearts, one facing down and one facing out um, for each of these corner bits. I don't know why. I just like the smaller hearts next to each other and together. Um, but you have some sort of play as to like where you put in your hearts here. So I'm going to connect my heart to this. The bottom tip of the heart will be the bottom point here. So this will be my first heart in this section. So sort of landing on the tip there. So I've got my heart and then I'm landing on that tip as if the heart were sort of part of the aura. And then I'll flip the tile over and I'm gonna put a second heart here, and this time this bottom tip will become the bottom tip of the heart. Unless I decide to ink it in. Nope, it's gonna be the bottom tip of the heart. Here we go. So we've got two hearts sort of nestled together there. I kind of like that. And I will ink in the little interstice here, the space between them. Yeah. I like that, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to each one of my corners. All right, it's time to add in some color. So as I have on prior tiles, I am going to begin by coloring in my hearts and I'm going to start by using these polychromos um, colored pencils by Faber-Castell. Let's see, Pink Matter Lake and Matter. And I will start with these bottom or sort of inner hearts right here. I'm going to go ahead and add in some color. I'll leave a little bit of a gap where a shine is going to be later right at the top of the heart. Just a tiny, tiny gap. And I'm pressing down pretty hard so I can get some really nice coverage on my color. And then I'm going to come in with the matter. And wherever I think there would be some shading or I want to add some shadow or dimension, I'm going to add just a bit of the red there. And I'm going to do the same pattern with these hearts on the outside here. And just for fun, so that I can sort of play with all of, well, many of the materials that I have, I'm going to use a second set of colored pencils. Um, these are the Luminance pencils. One is Purplish Red, <laughs> which I think is a funny name. That's this one right here. And the other one is ultramarine pink. So on the sort of more external heart, again, I'll start with the pink. Following a similar pattern, but in this case, I am thinking of a light source being over here. And being that this heart is upside down relative to this one, um, I do want to think my highlights are going to be on the right side. Normally, I put my my shadows on the, the right side. Um, so this is a little bit of a, I have to tell my brain, hey, we're on the opposite side right now. It's fun using a different set of color pencils and allowing myself to explore different materials during Valentangle. These Luminance pencils definitely feel different relative to the Faber-Castell, like as far as texture is concerned. They both give really nice vibrant color. Um, the Luminance pencils are a little bit thicker. They feel very nice and substantial when you're holding them. And they have a little bit more 
see there's like a little bit more residual powder. So these are more powdery, whereas these are more, I don't want to say waxy, but <laughs> relative to the Luminance pencils, they feel a little bit more waxy. <sighs> Gotta blow off some of that powder. All right, so I'm going to do that for each of these sort of outer hearts. And then for the ones that are at the very tippy top, I'm going to go in with just the, the matter. Nice red, red hearts on the outside here. And just leaving, like I, if I can remember to do so, leaving a tiny bit of a shine there. And again, as I usually do, I'll come in with my Posca pen later and add more shines. So I'm going to go ahead and color in all of these hearts and I'll be back in a moment. It already looks much more energetic and vibrant with some of that color in there. And we're going to be adding more color. So I'm going to be going over to my Stabilo Carbothello chalk pastel pencils, starting with this darker red. And for the most part, I'm going to treat this pencil as if it were my graphite pencil, adding the darker red wherever I think there might be some shadow. That's not always going to be the case, but I would like to sort of keep that in mind as I decide where I want to put this darker red. So I'm going to work just on this section to begin with. We'll finish the center first and then do the outside. And wherever got a little bit of an edge around the hearts, I will add some red. And then as I was saying earlier, when I was shading these hearts, I tend to put my shadows to the right. So along this right aura edge, I'll add a line. of red. And you can always layer more on. I'll do the same along this right edge here. You can always add more later and there will be a lot of sort of back and forth of like where there can be, you know, touching it up and getting your shading just right. So don't worry about adding a ton right now. Um, you can always add more later. Right here where the ribbon seems to go under, I'll put some additional chalk to create that shadow. Same thing right here. Let's go ahead and get out our tortillon and blend that in. So we're going to be doing, you know what? Let me turn this over to do my blending. We're going to be doing sort of a three layer shading and highlighting here, or three color anyways. One this darker red, one like an intermediary light pink, and one with the white chalk pastel pencil to hopefully blend from you know the deeper the darker red over to white on the other side of the ribbon and hopefully to make a nice smooth blend so now i'm just sort of pulling it out to create a shadow underneath coming off of those hearts. One could just do, you know, use this red as the, the shadow and then come in with some white on the other side here. I bet that would turn out just fine. Um, but what I've noticed is if I add that sort of intermediary light pink in the middle, 
the blending just seems to be a much more smooth. So even though it's a little bit of an extra step, um, which obviously you don't have to do, um, but I'm going to take this lighter pink and sort of add it right in the middle of the ribbon. And it's going to be that the sort of red will blend into it on one side and the white highlight will blend into it on the other side. So at this point, I'm interested in blending that pink in with the red, making a smooth transition. Then I'll bring my white Zentangle pencil and just along this edge here, Add a bit of highlight, same thing along this edge here. Now remember, this is a highlight rather than a shine. We'll be adding shines later with the Posca pen. I'm going to switch this over because I always like to blend, you know, mm, I don't want to blend over the lines I've already drawn. I'll probably have to redefine them later anyways. But I want to blend into the other chalk and pastels that are already here. So it's easier for me to do that when the chalks and the pastels are on the, the right side. So there's that highlight there, but with that intermediary pink, it feels like it, it's a smoother blend. Now, let me go back and think, are there any areas that I want to touch up? So I would like blend it a little bit more, maybe a tad bit more right there. any other areas And one little area I do want to add a bit of graphite. So right where the ribbons meet each other, just to really sort of emphasize the shadow that will happen as they go under, just adding a little wee bit of graphite there. Go ahead and redefine my lines. Just like we did in our day three tile, I am going to add in those curved flicks. So I'm going to be sort of um, mimicking as if I were adding some aura lines in here, flicking off of those hearts. Just again to harken back to the previous tile that we did and maybe adding a few dots here and there. I think it enhances the shading and like I said, it does sort of call back to the tile that we've already just done. And then I think two more steps for this section and then we'll be all finished with it. One is to add our Stardust Jelly Roll. You've got to know anytime I add an aura in, I'm going to want to add my Stardust Jelly Roll there. So get sneak in some glitter. And then finally, I'm going to use my Posca pen. Let me make sure to test it first. So 
So here's my little tester sheet. Oh yeah, that looks like it's doing just fine. What I find is if I store it tip down, like if I put it in a cup like that, it, it has these nice lines, but if I store it bottom down, the white is often sort of, it fades out a little bit. So for me, I've noticed that storage for my Posca pen makes a difference as far as performance is concerned. All right, Posca pen time. One of my favorite times. So I will add a shine on the right side. Nope, left side. <laughs> Yep, left side of the ribbon. I will also add some shines to my the left side of my hearts. It's just a subtle thing, but I feel like it makes a difference. All right, so I'm going to go through that same exact process for each one of these other sections as well. And then we'll get to our outside bits. That's looking so lovely. So let's go ahead and finish up by shading and highlighting these outside areas. And we're going to do that just as we did on day three and quite similar to how we did the inside. So taking my Carbothello sort of dark red chalk pastel pencil. I'm going to add some flicks of dark coming off of the heart. And also some flicks of dark coming in from the outer edge. And we can certainly, as we did here, use the light pink as an intermediary, but because these ribbons are so small, I am going to try out just adding some white down the middle of the ribbon. See how that goes. We like that just the way it is. If not, we can add some of that light pink. We feel like it's not smooth enough. It's not bad. I do like having the light pink in there. I feel like it sort of smooths out the red a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead. That was a great experiment. I'm going to go ahead and add just a tad bit of pink in there. I know it might not make a huge difference. But I want to do it. I want to try it out. And then I'm going to come in again with the highlight. So I guess the process will be just as we had done for the inside, where it will be red and then pink and then highlight. Yeah, I do like it. I, do, I feel like it's more smooth. Maybe I'm just being ultra picky. <laughs> that wouldn't be a first. Um, but I do like it. So I'm going to redefine my lines. And on day three, we also added flicks from the outside edge. So I'll do the same here. Our Stardust Jelly Roll to fill in the auras. So here we have it, today's finished tile. If you have made it this far, if you have drawn all of this, gone through the parade of all of the different materials and steps. Well done. Um, this was quite um, an adventure. So I hope you had a wonderful time. 
And I just wanted to point out, you know, here are the bits we added that were hearkening back to this day three tile that we created, um, which also tied in with our um, my title tile as well. And it was it's fun to sort of look at um, the size difference between the three and a half inch typical Zentangle tile and um, my hexagonal tiles. So I cut these so that from tip to tip they were three and a half inches. But you can see that's quite a bit um, smaller than this three and a half inch tile. So it's fun to see how, you know, I sort of got used to these smaller shapes and then this, you know, asked me to expand a little bit more. So let's go ahead and tuck these in to our blizzard book. Oh, we forgot. Let's add or let's read the quote for today. Three things that can't be rushed. Creativity, healing, love. The young Pueblo. This one caused me to think a little bit. First I thought maybe it maybe can't isn't the right word. Maybe shouldn't. And then it made me think, well, sometimes placing constraints, even if it's a time constraint, can cause one to be quite creative. So even though I might not wholeheartedly endorse this quote, I might have a little bit of debate there. I do think it was some really good um, food for thought as far as healing love and creativity are concerned. So there we go. Day four. Let's tuck it right in there. And it looks like tomorrow on day five, we'll be working on a three and a half inch gray tile as well. Get my title page, my title tile. Thank you so much for joining me today on this adventure. I hope you had a fabulous time and a wonderful rest of your day. See you again soon. Bye-bye.